ain't doing too bad at all. We're gonna start the Olympics. 440 relay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Take the baton and pass it. Oh wow. Cav is going in. I ain't doing too bad at all, you hear me? Doing oh, too wow. bad. No way. Yeah. Oh, we got DJ Burman. Even Burman smoking? All right. Yeah, why not? Wow. Oh. This is a special occasion. Why not? First DJ time. V. Wow. Yeah. If you don't Burman know. Gonna fall out today, dude. You won't know. You inside the GGN with your host with the most finding Nemo, AKA Nemo host. And I got some real special guests on my show. Yeah, they've been here before. They've been to the mountain around the block and back. It is the one and only Far East movement in the wow. house. What's up, nephews? Uncle Snoop, thanks man, for having man, me. Man, y'all just, every time I see y'all, y'all get bigger, better, y'all get flyer. I love what y'all do. Y'all music is the, is the bomb. I remember back in the days, before I was even up on y'all music, uh, Kiki used to play y'all music, right? Kiki was like the, oh, okay. yeah, she used to oh, put it out okay. there, real spit. She used to put it out there, you know what I'm saying? And, and put the vibe out there that y'all was really doing some good heavy music and you know, it, it made me want to get on the track with y'all, which we did our thing on. Thank you. I bet you wake up in the morning and you hey. kiss yourself. Cause I would, cause I would, if, if I, I were you. you. Yeah. Oh, that's a bomb record, man. I still remember when we did Canada together. You came out of the coffin. And, what? Oh, that was crazy. You hear me? Crazy. I mean, I love, I love performing with performers, and you guys are natural performers. And uh, that's one thing um, that I want to ask you guys. Where did y'all get that? that knack to perform and not just make records, but to be able to be performers. Oh, you know, we used to go to a lot of hip hop shows. You know, we watched you with Pac and, and the Dog Pound at, at House of Blues on DVD. We just mm. always been a fan of like watching shows. And so when we picked up the mic and, and tried it, it's like, wow, you, you can't just talk into it. You actually got to project your voice. You know, you got to be heard. And it was just watching the Beastie Boys kind of just every day. We'd, we'd go in, uh, in Koreatown there's a little back room at his parents' crib, and we just disturb the neighbors, get complaints till like 6 a.m., but it was just nonstop grinding. So that's where this thing was created in Koreatown? Yeah, yeah, right over there in Koreatown. Shout out to K-Town, all my homies yes, over there. Y'all know what it is. I mean, I'm over there all the time, man. Make time for me. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You did? So did y'all mirror anybody? Was it anybody that y'all wanted to be like, or was y'all like, you know what, we just want to be the first of our kind? Ooh, man, that's a good question. We well, well, there was you know growing up in LA, it was Far Side. There was like dilated yeah. people. It was a lot of that. Dope groups, yeah. Yeah, we you know we had a model of being around a group because we're all homies. It's like you know ain't no one, you know the leader. It's just let's just make music and. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we like the flow. I like the musicality. I like the, the I don't know the Far Side. The way they would switch off and Beastie Boys, of course, they were always that yeah. big ins inspiration for us. So hip hop definitely influenced your music. Yeah, definitely. Okay, I love that because it's like y'all music is not just hip hop. It's great music. It's, it's, it's expandable. It's all over the globe. It's global. And one thing about making good music, it don't have no title. And I feel like y'all music has no title, but it has a face. And y'all the face of it. You dig? Thank you. And it all started in 2003, right? Yeah. On that yeah. round round. Yeah. Fast and Furious <laughs> yes. Tokyo oh, Drift with Bad Wow. Hey, these notes, yo, that, that's good. real. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Man, well, how was that for y'all being able to be in a, a real a franchise, because that movie's a franchise. You know, that was just some, some L.A. shit. You know, it was, mm -hmm. it was we, we were here making music, and, you know, everybody's, you know, you got homies that work for directors or work for movie studios. One of our homies used to drive the director to the set every day, and what he would do is he would brain, and the director's Justin Lin, mm. he would brainwash him and put our CD in there and just play it for him. Every What's the homie name day. that was His driving? His name is Evan Leon. Happy birthday, Ev. Hey, yeah. Evan Leon, you a real motherfucker. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yo. Evan. Pulling in the air for you, Ev. That's for you. Yo, that's love. You know, we always gonna pay tribute to the people who do small things for big people. Because that was a small thing, but it was for some big people, and they got y'all in the game. For real. And, and everybody recognized this is what y'all do. Then y'all came back with the, the major label debut, like a G6. Mm. Oh, boy. Now, that was gigantic. Yeah, we, the major label thing was, it was a dream come true. We actually used to intern over there at Interscope Records, and, you know, we'd see your, your, your pictures on the wall, everybody's mm -hmm. all these records, thinking, yeah, one day we got to do that. And we remember that when we got signed and put the album together, it was a real learning experience because, 
you know, you think, oh, that's an expectation. You know, you see all these music videos on TV, you listen to the radio, and you think, oh, you got to make records like this or like this. But, you know, it was a good learning experience for us to just think, well, L.A. raised us, the people of L.A., you know, we, we bumped Dog Pound, Snoop Dogg, like, we got to take all these influences and just make it that mm -hmm. forest movement sound along with the dance stuff and being Asian American, repping K-Town. And that's where it kind of kind of went in. And when they asked us, when we worked on, we were working on our album, they said, what, what artists you want to work with? We said, Snoop Dogg. Oh. <laughs> and, and so we, thanks for that collabo. And mm -hmm. that was easy. That was an yeah. easy call. Like I said, we had people on the inside that was working for y'all. And then y'all made hot music. So it's easy to to be a part of some shit that's hot and dynamic and representing where you come from. So I've always been one to love getting with the youngsters when they fresh and they in the game. And like I said, y'all was y'all was just jumping in and it felt like it was the right thing to do because y'all y'all give inspiration to an old cat like myself as well. Man, to keep right. me in mind when y'all got hit records. You yeah. What upcoming projects do y'all got in stores? Well, we've been working at uh over at the studio in Inglewood right now, just getting that new album together. Uh so we're getting close. Uh, Illis is the first song. Uh, they just started playing our new song, Bang to the Curb, too. Right. And, uh, but we, we wanted to take a different stance on this album compared to like th the stuff with G6 or our second album, which was more dance and international. We said, you know, you, you, you get a lot of experiences and influences when you're traveling from the food to the clubs to the girls. but we can't get lost of like what really held us down and shaped us and that's LA so we wanted to bring the album back here and really represent Koreatown because it's kind of like a a name of a town that you don't really hear shouted out in movies mm -hmm. or music or the news and so we just really wanted to bring awareness to that and pay homage I guess you could say it's our soundtrack doesn't necessarily represent what Koreatown is, but it's, it's how we see it, so. But y'all from Koreatown, so it's a piece of it. It's the culture. Yeah. It's right. what, you know, what you bred by, so. And it's a Koreatown in everybody's town. You ain't gotta be Korean, and you ain't gotta be from K-Town to get down with it. Man. Yeah, I treat it like, you know, I, I, I say, the heart is the home, and my music is, is, the, is the blood vessel to connect it. You know, if I can hit you in the heart, I got you. Yeah. And that's why I wanna be with you. I don't want you to like my music because you like my voice or like, certain things about me. I want you to like the feeling and the expression, the struggle and the culture. So that way you can make it yours. It's yours. It's your music. So when you sing it, that's my shit. Yeah, that's your shit. That's what I made it for. It's you. For the, the video to Illust, uh, we just wanted to make a video that we felt when people watched it, they can take something from that and go, yeah, that I feel like that. I feel like that when I'm at the office and my coworkers are just too loud and my boss won't even let me get a sip of water, whatever it is. It, you know, we, we wanted to make something that was relatable and we met up with our family uh, over at Maker and they really held it down for us, called up a lot of people that we don't have in our phones. You know what I mean? And Riff Raff came through and represented. Big thank you to the Stampede family uh, that really, you know, helped come through on that. And it was a crazy, wild, it's full of cameos from Dumbfounded. Uh, Watsky, you got Jeffree Star on there, yeah. there's Steve Green over there, just a whole slew of people. Yeah. Appreciate them all coming out. And they came support. out for y'all, because regardless who made the call, this was the conversation. Would you guys come be in the video? Who video? Far East Movement. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that sound bite. <laughs> That's what it's supposed to be. Shout out to the homeboy Riff Raff. Riff Raff is a bad, crazy motherfucker too, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, you, can't do do every, you can't do everything he do though. Yeah. Mm -mm. Sometimes you have to watch a motherfucker do some shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you do that. All right, okay, that's cool. You did that. You did that. That's where that terminology came up. You did that. That's when you let a motherfucker do it and you'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 you did that. Today in Hawaii, it's a little bit sticky. It's, it's almost moist and, and damp and it's getting hot. It's a little bit sticky in Hawaii and, and, and wet.
what me and Ted was talking about, and I don't know if you guys remember this, but when the riots jumped off mm -hmm. in 92, Koreans and blacks didn't see eye to eye Ooh, because it was a lot of misunderstanding with the looting and they was just in the environment that we was in and we felt like taking from everybody until they said, fuck that. They pulled their guns out and started busting at us. You know what I'm saying? So how do you feel that that day has transformed to this day? Yo, it's crazy you just said that. It's so crazy because that's actually the basis of the album and, and uh, why we wanted to name the album K-Town Riot. It was to kind of redefine for a new generation. Like, you know, LA is so influential. You know, you see Snoop Dogg everywhere around the world. And I don't think a lot of people can really see like what it took for LA to, to, to be worldwide. And a lot of it was the riots in that time had shaped a lot of cultures, a lot of businesses, a lot of race relations politicians even now and musicians. So like what you said right there is, is a lot of people see, wow, wow, Far East Movement um, actually did a song with Snoop Dogg, but don't realize the LA cultural relevance of that, of yeah, Koreans, Asians, Latinos, African-Americans. It was real, real tension. And it was a lot of, a lot of struggle, a lot of, lot, of, lot of grind, a lot of tears. But now it's like, Amazingly, we're here at this table on GGN with Uncle Snoop. Like, like it, love. Yeah, it's all love, and and that's the most that's the important message we wanted to get across with this album. That so. And it's, yeah. it, to me, that day created a lot of uh, Koreans and African American relationships that exist. Because if you look in the industry, there are a lot of those relationships, and there were top figures with business, either like how me and Ted do it. Ted do the business, I do the creative but we do it so well and the way we pity pat off each other and we help each other, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even know that we both came from that era where we was against each other at one point, not personally, but just for our culture and our people. We was against each other, but now we for each other just to see the energy change from a negative to a positive and us to keep it alive for 20 plus years. That was 20 some years ago. We created a relationship that can't nobody break it. It's ours now, you know what I'm saying? And we rolling with it in generations like your grandparents and my parents and my grandparents. Now they all sit down and chop it up and have a good time. And when they see each other, it's love because our struggle is the same now. So I'm happy to see y'all doing y'all thing on the musical tip and representing that culture, you know what I'm saying, that got y'all to the point where y'all at because y'all are a part of that culture. Thank you. Thank you. Now, that's what we do, the GGN News Network. I'm your host with the most fine in Nemo, a.k.a. Nemo hoes, and uh, sometimes we like to get deep to let you know that we do have intellect, you know what I'm saying? But I like to pause for the calls and put another one in the air because I just yes. don't care that we're going to run this bobsled down and back and see if it can come back in two and two. We're going to try it again. That's why I got and they're show. off. The last and one. <laughs> <laughs> they're out the gate. They're out the gate. They're out the gate. <laughs> <laughs> First try. Fuck it. I'm gonna do one too. Might as well, man. Shit. First Celebrate, man. This oh. is once in a lifetime, GGN. We are here with Uncle Steve. Yeah, hey, if Birdman can, can do it, you gotta do it. You yeah, can't I let know, him man. beat you to it, man. I'm up. <laughs> oh, right. You can't let him beat you to the punch. Now, what everybody, all of my fans wanna know is as far as movement coming with a movie or a documentary, because people wanna see you guys. They like they think you guys are like superheroes or like action heroes, so they would love to see y'all in a movie. Have y'all ever thought about that? We're doing a version of Fantastic Four, actually. For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, he's going. He's, he's he's the rubber guy. <laughs> Starts off with smooth. Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we would love to do some anim a anime work, but like you know, we're big fans of anime, um, so. I'm gonna write a movie for us. Don't worry about yeah. that. Yeah. And don't trip when I write the script. Look. I'm gonna know karate, y'all not. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we so wanted to I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna write us something, man. All right. We're down yes. 100% right here. That's We're gonna be you. some bad motherfuckers. Don't worry about nothing. Yeah. Fucking niggas up worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> the young one inch punch and shit. Right? Yeah. Oh. Come up with your special move. Right. Death, death touch. Oh. If y'all could star in a movie with a leading actress and could have a love scene with her, Ooh. who would it be? Oof. Damn. Yep. I'm gonna have to go with uh, Mila Kunis. Really? Yeah. Yeah. All right. She hot. She got she, she got that petite hot. Yeah, she hot. 
Yeah, she plus she's Meg on Family Guy. That yeah. that goes a long way. How about that? Meg Griffin, huh? Yeah, yeah. Mm, Remember, you get a love scene with her. Love scene. And love you get scene. to practice it a couple of days in advance. Me mess, mess up. <laughs> yeah. Like, Oops, can I get bad. a couple of them? Yeah. Can, can we get oh, a duo of damn. Megan's? Can we get a Megan Fox and a Megan Good? Okay. Oh, damn. At the same damn time? Damn. Yeah. At the same, like that. Damn. At the same damn. damn time. They got the same name, so it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Megan. They'd be like, what, what? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what? At the same Turn around yeah. at the same what, damn time. What, what? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Look back at it. Look back at it. I'm gonna have to go with uh, Scarlett Johansson. Oh. Man, that was a fucking awesome choice. Like Give me some, no fingerprints. <laughs> that was a motherfucking awesome choice. Juicy. Bad, bad, bad. Have you seen her in real life? No, no, Oh My God. Camera don't lie, camera don't lie. So DJ Berman, who would you have your seat? Oh man, I would actually want to take it back to Purple Rain with Apollonia. What? Oh, what? Yeah. You know what's up? What's up? You know what I'm saying? The far, the far, in the in the far, you know, in the bar, in the barn scene. You know what I'm saying? Apollonia, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Wow, you, know what I'm saying? you hear me? Yeah. Sex shooter, yeah. shooting love in your direction. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on and kiss the girl. You know I seen her, right? I did a concert. Now you think I'm lying? Everything you, you I'm telling you what it is. I did a concert, right? So I'm rapping. And motherfucker like, dog, Apollonia want to meet you. I'm like, what? I'm like, for real? They're like, yeah, cuz she in the crowd. I'm like, she in the crowd? I'm like, bring her on stage. They brought her on stage. And she turned around and shook that thing. I said, my God. <laughs> Church, preach, tabernacle.